name's Chris and I repair my own audio equipment and I also show you how to repair yours. So let's get started. For a hundred bucks you can get an oscilloscope, a signal generator, the cabling, and the software needed to troubleshoot your vintage audio equipment. already please subscribe I've got my new scope up here my new little PC oscilloscope it's a Handtech 6022 BL here's the box it came in if you want to see that but here's the unit itself it is feels like aluminum the case itself is uh, something Aluminum, this is rubber, plastic here on the ends, but I think the case itself is aluminum. Here on this end, we have uh, two BNC connectors, it looks like, uh, for the uh, scope channels, uh, channel one, channel two. On the other end, we've got a USB connector, and it also came with the USB cable, uh, which powers it. You hook it to the USB port of your PC that you're using. But it came with two scope probes. I mean, real scope probes. Uh, times one, times ten. There's a little switch here uh, that you can switch them back and forth. Uh, they look fine. Doesn't look like there's nothing wrong with these. Uh, we'll see what happens. I've put the USB cable in the back of my Mac and I'm going to hook it here into this uh, into the hand tack and see if it'll recognize it. I'm not using the company software. I did a little research online and they said it was better to use this other open, uh, open source uh, software. So I uh, went ahead and uh, downloaded that. It's called Open Hand Tech. After downloading the software and inserting the USB cable into the PC oscilloscope, I was able to get the software running and have it detect the uh, PC oscilloscope. So there's a trimmer you've got to adjust. In the manual here, it tells you uh, how to do that. There's a frequency compensation. Anyway, I won't go through all that, but it's really not a big deal. You just have to follow the instructions. So there's two parts to this video. One is the PC oscilloscope that I'm showing you the setup of, but the other part is to use your iPhone as a signal generator. You'll be able to use these two items together to help you troubleshoot issues in your vintage audio equipment. So let me show you what you need to do to get that signal generator on your iPhone. What you want to do is go to the uh, App Store on your phone and you want to type in, you want to go to the search function, uh, type in audio function, whoops. and generator it's right up here there's two of them there's audio function generator audio function pro audio function pro i saw was 399 so i'm going to just try the free version you just get it you go ahead and download it get it on your phone and i've done that and i've downloaded it it should be here somewhere and there it is my little icon here generator one more thing that you're going to need is a lightning adapter to RCA cable. On one end it's the lightning uh, connector which that connector is the same one you use on your iPhone to charge it. it goes right in the middle plug and then on the other end you have your left and right channel your RCA uh, 
connectors. And then this will just plug right into your amplifier. I've got my little Kenwood up here, my KA5002 just to show you. And you just have a, a white one goes in the left channel, a red one goes in the uh, right channel. And there you go. And then, as I mentioned, the lightning connector goes into the iPhone. Now if you've got a different type of phone, an Android phone or whatever, I'm sure there's a cable available for that. I don't have one of those, so I'm not sure, but I'm sure you can uh, get one for your uh, particular equipment. So you need that. So really now we've got all three pieces. We've got the software on the iPhone itself, the signal generator, We've got the PC oscilloscope set up on the uh, Mac, in my case. And we've got the cable now that can run that function generator software into the amplifier. So I think that's all three pieces. Let me just show you here real quick where I got the equipment. The PC oscilloscope I got off of eBay. It was $60 and about $10 to ship, so it was about $70. And for the Lightning to RCA adapter cable, that was about $16, and I got that off of uh, Amazon. And you can get the signal generator program from the Apple App Store. So now that I've got everything that I need, I'm going to first of all hook the two scope probes directly to the RCA jacks. You could hold the scope probe onto this, but there's no way the scope probe is going to attach to that, um, to that pin. So it's just easier with a jumper. You can attach it however you like. The ground, you want to use the shield that's on the outside here of the RCA connector. So that's attached. And then we do the other one the same way. And there we go. We've got the function generator. And let's go and just create a one kilohertz signal. And let's see what we get. Here is channel one. The bottom here is channel two. Um, boy, looks fine. I don't know why you could not use this for troubleshooting in, in a vintage piece of audio equipment. Because really, that's about the only thing you need. Uh, you need just to be able to compare signals, and those look identical. But now I'm just going to put a fault in by, by doing that, because this generator will generate um, sine waves, like you see up there now, but it'll also do square waves. And this may be more typical of what you may run into if you've got a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the square wave on channel 2. You can see now we've got a, a sine wave and we've got a square wave. And if you had an issue with your piece of audio equipment, you've got distortion or you've got some other type of issue, this is the type of thing you would see. And there's no way to trace this out with a Maldi meter or your eyes. You really do need an oscilloscope. And, and this is a cheap, easy uh, alternative to having one. This function generator is, you know, very full featured. You can do frequency sweeps. Um, you can set any frequencies that you want to have this automatically run through from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz in any combination. There's a ton of different features of this. I've got it set right now to start at 20 hertz and to run through 1,000 hertz and to do that in 5 seconds with a sine wave. And it'll just keep repeating that over and over. And you can see the frequencies changing. And this is now back to 20 hertz, and it's running up to 1,000 hertz. And then back to 20 hertz, and up to 1,000. And you can do this in the other direction. Or you can program it to any set of frequencies you want to do. So, I mean, you don't need any more than this for vintage audio. You can see it's able to trigger fine. You can see it. Uh, that's the whole key. What else do you need? You just need to be able to see a sine wave 90% of the time. 
Anyway, that's all you need. Be able to take a look at a signal and say, boy, the left channel is different than the right. So this is a great tool for troubleshooting vintage audio equipment or going, going ahead and testing it and going ahead and putting through different frequencies through it. So very impressive for just a few dollars. Really in today's world, right? One good meal out and a few drinks and a tip and you've paid for this whole setup. If you've seen some of my other videos where I'm troubleshooting, Shooting. I have a Tektronix 465B oscilloscope that I use all the time. It's vintage in itself. It's 40 years old. I have a Siglent SDG 1005 signal generator. You guys have seen that when I do bench testing and try to put a signal through the equipment. And also I have a Rigel a digital oscilloscope a DS1052E, and I use each of those, and I've had all those quite a few years. All of them work well, and they've always done everything I needed them to do to repair vintage audio equipment. But really, what I just showed you, this Handtech PC oscilloscope, along with your iPhone signal generator, I don't know why it can't do 90% of the equipment that I already have. So is there any downside to the PC oscilloscope and the the iPhone signal generator. There's two major downsides, I think, to the PC oscilloscope. One is you need a PC. As I said at the beginning, I think many of us have an old PC hanging out there. That could be a downside. You don't want to go out and buy a PC for this PC oscilloscope because in today's world, you could get a nice oscilloscope for a lot less than it would cost you to get a PC. The other downside to the Handtech PC oscilloscope is it has a 35 volt maximum input. The BNC inputs are 35 volts maximum. Now that's fine for tracing signals. You're not going to be running your piece of equipment wide open. You're just going to have a few hundred millivolts probably come into your auxiliary port and you're just going to follow that through the amplifier, pre-amplifier, receiver, whatever piece of equipment that you're trying to troubleshoot. Unlike the other pieces of equipment that I showed you, both the Tektronix scope and the Rigel, they have 300 volt maximum inputs. So you can take that probe and and see if you've got that 60 volts on your power coming out of your power supply for an example. I don't think you want to do it with this PC oscilloscope. I don't know what will happen but probably nothing good. Uh, you got to remember it's very inexpensive. I doubt there's a lot of protection involved inside it. You're, you're probably going to blow it up or maybe blow up your computer even. Who knows? <laughs> there's always going to be compromises when you buy an inexpensive piece of equipment and this thing does a wonderful job but it does have limitations. Limitations. So again, the software I'm using is Open Hand Tech 6022. It's a free download, and within this software, there's a user manual, which is real helpful. If you get hung up, it takes you right from the beginning of how to set the unit up, if you have issues. It has all of the uh, instructions about how to get it connected to your computer and then it teaches you how to use it. I didn't really go through that a whole lot. It's like a standard oscilloscope. It's got the standard controls an oscilloscope would have. These are all located over on the right hand side of the screen near the top. I didn't really go through those too much, but this would be a good opportunity for you guys who've never used an oscilloscope to play around. You can use your mouse and try the different parameters that are available. So I think as you can see, I'm a fan of this setup. If I were just starting out, this is what I'd start with. I wouldn't go out and get the equipment I have. I'd start with this, see how it goes, see if you find some interest in troubleshooting vintage audio equipment, or any electronics for that matter. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up down below. For you non-subscribers, I'd really appreciate a subscription. And for my present subscribers, as always, thank you so much. Y'all have a good day.